Hello again and welcome uh, to this conversation series celebrating International Coaching Week. For those of us that are joining us for the first time, my name is Meenakshi Ayer and I'm the founder and principal of North Star Solutions and Services, a future work oriented uh, virtual coaching training and consulting practice. And we uh, specialize in partnering with mid-career technology professionals in building out their leadership development journeys. And um, uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to celebrate International Coaching Week, what it means to uh, me uh, as a personal agility and self-leadership coach, and also to uh, some of my coaching colleagues. Uh, so today, I have the pleasure uh, of uh, welcoming Chris Sazdak uh, with, uh, with, with, to this conversation. Chris is based in the lovely Mauritius, and uh, he's been uh, in He's been in that uh, in the coaching space for the past few years. Uh, he's built multiple teams in the financial inclusion and agricultural development sectors across several African countries. And it's in, in that experience that uh, he had the opportunity to experience coaching firsthand. And uh, that pivoted him uh, into uh, founding a company that uses technology to make coaching accessible to folks around the world. And so Chris is the founder of Coffee Chat, and it's a platform that enables teams in emerging markets to offer affordable and relevant one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, and group coaching to uh, their uh, leaders. Uh, Chris, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Um, before we get started with the questions, uh, can you share a little bit more about what you are currently engaged in? I know you've pivoted quite a bit in the past couple of years since founding Coffee Chat. Yeah, well, um, I mean, actually, it's, it's <laughs> wonderful to have this conversation with you. And it's been wonderful also to kind of uh, learn from you and engage with you over the past few years as we've both been uh, launching and, and finding our way in, in this wider coaching world. Um, you, you gave a, a wonderful intro. And I appreciate that. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, so, as you said, I had experienced coaching in some of the leadership roles that I had early in my career and experienced that kind of profound impact that working with a coach, in addition to other forms of mentorship and manager support, can really um, guide a strong and sustainable um, leadership best practices. And it was that experience that motivated me really to find ways to make it easier for companies, especially in the African region where I've been working my full professional career so far to uh, equip their own team members, not just the top executives, but middle managers, particularly uh, with uh, forms of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And mm. at the beginning, I set out to kind of build a uh, typical marketplace uh, of a business to try to build up a supply of coaches and then connect them to both companies and, and individuals. Uh, I've learned different uh, realities of the market along the way, both in terms of just making the, the economics of coaching work at scale, but also uh, what uh, the market needs, what companies need, what individuals need, and uh, what they're willing to pay for, to be honest with you. And mm. uh, what um, Coffee Chat has uh, started to figure out recently is really um, connecting with companies and uh, listening to them on their needs. And so we've recently launched different ways to uh, provide coaching. And that also includes not just professional coaching, but also uh, peer coaching uh, in, the, in the sense that managers themselves can start to adopt uh, the principles of coaching and uh, practice coaching uh, other fellow leaders at different companies um, so that they can better show up to their teams and um, practice a uh, quote unquote coaching. Uh, so mm -hmm. trying to um, use this concept of coaching, which has typically been reserved for highly trained professional coaching and kind of spread that out so that more people can be uh, attuned to what it really means to be a coach and, and get kind of excited about using the, the kind of the ability to ask powerful questions to unlock answers uh, amongst uh, their team members, mm -hmm. which is what, um, what, what really interested me the most. Because when I work with several different executive coaches, uh, in addition to it unlocking 
uh, new perspectives for myself, it also had me thinking, how can I be more of a coach to my own team members? And at the time, I didn't know what to do. I tried to almost uh, mirror or replicate what uh, the style that my executive coaches were using. It didn't really quite work out. But now that I've um, kind of looking at it from the other perspective, I think there are some quick and easy wins to um, uh, get managers on board with how can they use questions, how can they use frameworks like the grow model uh, in their day-to-day -day work. Um, so yeah, really excited about what uh, the coaching industry has has evolved even just over the past three years. I know there are many people that have been in the coaching industry for decades, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that the transformation and the uh, increased awareness and excitement is is much more transformative uh, over that time period. But even just uh, in the past year or two, um, lots of change um, to to what it means to be a coach and mm. what coaching means in the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I one I really enjoyed watching your journey. Uh, I know we connected on LinkedIn, and I think we started around the same time in our in our coaching journeys as entrepreneurs as well. So it's been really exciting to uh, see uh, the sort of like the different paths uh, we both have taken. And one of the things you said about peer coaching. Uh, within the organizational space, that is really exciting uh, because one of the things that uh, has come up and also it's come up in this conversation series is how to equip uh, our leaders within organizations to adopt a coaching mindset and practice those skills with their teams. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And if uh, what better way than to have it set up as part of your platform, as, as one of your offerings, so organizations, your clients can engage with that in a, in a safe space as well, uh, because they would have had the experience of receiving coaching themselves. So that's great. Uh, I'll look forward to hearing more about that. Um, I also know that uh, you've been very actively engaged uh, in the startup scene uh, uh, ecosystems in the African region. So I wanted to ask you, uh, in your experience, how are you seeing coaching uh, play a role in developing entrepreneurs? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to startups, um, and this is inclusive of the kind of SME startup, someone who's you know, building a small uh, business and also more venture backable tech uh, startups, I think uh, there's definitely similarities. And I would say that there's two types of coaching to, to look at. There's the business coaching, someone who's maybe an experienced business mentor who's coming in and uh, giving some practical advice. And then there's the executive coaching, helping a founder really grapple with some of the, the challenges in decision-making and work-life balance that can make sure that uh, they're giving it their best shot uh, as a startup founder. And so I've experienced and seen both and I think both have a role to play. With, with Coffee Chat, uh, what we've been able to do is uh, link different accelerator programs with business coaches. We've done that a few times, uh, but what I'm even more excited about is uh, we've had uh, two accelerators now uh, and a few different uh, independent startups use the Coffee Chat platform to find executive coaches that work with the founder to really um, prepare themselves to step up as a leader as their company grows. And also mm -hmm. to um, kind of take this idea that what got us here won't get us there and um, change how we manage our teams, change how we think about how we're going after the market. And um, in at least one case, uh, the founder kind of credits working with an executive coach as kind of unlocking 10x mm -hmm. growth were, were mm -hmm. his words that he uh, was putting some mental barriers behind or uh, putting some mental barriers up on where he defined his market. Um, mm -hmm. And he was limiting that actually to the African market, which um, a lot of African founders do. Um, even founders like myself, uh, who are not from the continent, have almost uh, handicapped ourselves by, I think, like limiting ourselves to the African market when our products and services can actually be relevant uh, much more broadly and globally. And so uh, when this individual founder worked with a coach, that coach was not a business expert by any means, 
but was working with him to understand his ambitions and his goals and in challenging his preconceived notions that maybe he and his business advisors had um, been putting around what his growth were, was. Mm -hmm. Because in some ways, yes, you want to prioritize, but in other ways, um, you need to challenge your assumptions so that you can uh, really uh, achieve your full potential. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've started to see a few cases where even traditional um, uh, founders, traditional business leaders have realized that there's a place for both business coaching and leadership coaching uh, or executive coaching um, for startup founders uh, at an early stage. Mm. Um, so there, there are still some people who are like, no, no, like, let's just focus on business experts. That's what they need to get through this grueling period. But mm. uh, I would I would push back and argue there's a, a role um, for both that you need uh, technical assistance, uh, especially if it's your first time launching and scaling up a startup, but you also need um, an executive coach or a leadership coach um, if you can uh, access one uh, mm. to help guide you, you know, more holistically and to kind of help you think outside the box in some ways. Mm. So did you have a coach when you were setting up Coffee Chat? So uh, I've, I've bounced around a little bit. Uh, to be honest, um, I used my co-founder, uh, as a coach. So she is an executive coach herself. And uh, for the first year or so, uh, we were having weekly check-ins, we called them, but I was really uh, receiving some uh, coaching from her. Oh. I've also spoken with a lot of coaches. So as a part of uh, building up the, the network of coaches, which we have around 300 from 30 different countries around the world, I would speak with a lot of coaches and, and kind of understand their methodology Mm -hmm. um, a few coaches have been uh, gracious enough to um, give me, you know, some pro bono sessions as we've gone, and I've started to engage now in this peer coaching uh, network. Um, so yes, I've tried to make it a, a part of my uh, rhythm as well, and it's definitely been been helpful. Absolutely, uh, you know, uh, in one of my other conversations with uh, Elaine Gold, she's the co-founder of uh, the Global Entrepreneurship Network UK. And one of the points she had made was, we were talking about entre entrepreneurship, and one of the points she had made was this journey from being a founder to being a leader. And, uh, and that's what I, I heard uh, come up in what you shared as well. And that's where coaching really can play a big role in continuing the development of the individual uh, disconnected from the business as well. Because startup founders, especially solopreneurs, can uh, very easily not distinguish between themselves and the business. So uh, I think coaching- 100%. And yeah, and I think for me, um, you know, coaching can play a role on an ongoing basis, but it's uh, always been seen as, as particularly important during uh, changes or transitions. And so uh, a couple of months ago, I actually hired my first full-time employee for Coffee Chat. And so that's required me to make some mind shifts or some changes of, of my- day-to-day uh, -day work, work routine because it wasn't just me as a solo founder. Now I need to um, you know, bring another person on, explain the vision, uh, find where this person is going to add the most value and you know, understand where I can now step into different types of roles and focus my energy uh, in more efficient ways. So that's been interesting. And I've made sure that uh, this, this employee who's a growth manager based in Kenya has all also experienced coaching herself. So she's mm. working with an executive coach and she's also part of our peer coaching network. So uh, I found that you can't really go and um, promote coaching if you if you haven't experienced it uh, yourself. And I guess I came, I came at Coffee Chat in maybe a different way from a lot of people in the coaching sector. I'm not a professional trained coach myself. Um, so I'm more this person in the middle where I'm preaching saying, look, coaching work for me and, and you guys should also uh you know consider coaching as a tool in your leadership development toolkit um and, and a lot of people assume that i'm also a coach but i'm saying later i'm not marketing myself i'm <laughs> marketing this awesome group of coaches that i've personally spoken with all of them and uh, they can really help accelerate you or your team or your career so uh, i'm trying to replicate that with the team that i'm building that they also have this um, natural understanding 
and natural uh, ability to explain to potential companies, potential founders uh, that uh, coaching can really uh, transform uh, your, your way of doing business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Chris, I will tell you, uh, I'm sold on coaching, not just because I'm a credential coach, but mainly because of my experience as a client in peer coaching conversations and how much I walked away with and how powerful and impactful it has been. And I can absolutely relate to you what you're saying. I've taken advantage of peer coaching conversations uh, as I was going through figuring out the next thing as a solopreneur. So uh, totally relate to that. Um, so having talked about how coaching can really help uh, leaders and founders, I wanted to hear from you uh, what might be some barriers that you've seen uh, folks experiencing accessing coaching, especially you know, be it founders or leaders stepping into their leadership role for the first time? In terms of barriers, um, it, it's, it, it's, there's a lot of different angles to look at this. There's, um, does someone actually want uh, to work with a coach? And then the second part is, are they able to find uh, the right type of coach? And so uh, we've come across all sorts of uh, barriers in that, in that sense. Um, in terms of understanding what coaching is. I think there's obviously a lot of different uh, types of coaching. Um, and, and so uh, taking the time to explain uh, the different types of coaching and then let letting someone almost pick the type of coaching they, they think they need that works for some people as opposed to uh, proposing one specific type of coaching that, that sometimes puts people you know, on their back foot and a little bit defensive. Um, so, so explaining uh, and enlightening people on the different types of coaching and, and having them proactively seek out one type of coach and then also, also helping them um, get a sense of, of why coaching is important. The, the other uh, element of uh, access uh, and not being able to afford coaching um, is why Coffee Chat is focused on working with companies who often have a training budget and, and where there's incentives uh, are aligned to invest in rising leaders. Mm. Um, one thing that we uh, that combines both of those is, is this idea of a, a coachability uh, and coachability index. Um, I came across a number of different uh, assessments uh, when, when learning about the coaching industry. And one that was kind of a simple test of whether someone's ready for coaching is what's called the coachability index. And there's a couple of different versions of this. And with Coffee Chat, we looked at the different uh, versions and kind of streamlined um, to, to mm -hmm. these 10 questions that I think really help someone who might not be aware of what coaching is, mm -hmm. uh, have them answer how ready are they willing to X, Y, and Z. Um, and uh, if, if they can answer uh, those 10 questions, it gives them a score uh, on how coachable or how ready they are to work with a coach. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of, uh, that's been effective in some individuals cases where they can say, okay, yeah, I've, I've answered all those questions. I think I'm actually ready. Or if they don't answer those questions um, to a degree that would indicate that they're ready for coaching, uh, we we recommend a couple um, different steps uh, for them because one of the one of the common reasons, uh, and this is included in one of the questions, that someone would not uh, want to work with a coach at a particular time is just how busy they are. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, a lot of leaders, a lot of managers um, are in the in the heat of a particular big project, and they're saying, "Oh, let me start coaching once things uh, settle down," and often things don't settle down uh, to, to the point where they expect. And uh, so it's kind of always pushing it down, down the road. Uh, I've been guilty of this earlier in my career saying, no, 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 not right now. I'm not ready to do a deep dive right now. But in, in reality, um, coaching doesn't need to be a super deep dive right away. It can be um, the beginning of a journey. And mm. I, I'm of the opinion uh, that working with a coach should actually, it's better to work with a coach when you're super busy and when you're in the midst of uh, even some crazy projects because during those times is where there's opportunities for practice. 
because often when you're working with a coach, mm. you're talking about, you're reflecting on specific challenges. And then by the end of that call, you should ideally walk away with some potential new, new strategies to use. And to use those strategies, you need opportunities to practice them. And mm. so if you've just wrapped up this huge three-month project, and now it's kind of a dull area for the next two to six weeks, how are you going to practice those new strategies? To, to mm. make any kind of change, you need to both think about, recognize, and then actually apply or practice those new skills. And so if you've just, if you're, if you finish this big project and now you're working with a coach, yes, it's helpful to have this debrief or this retrospective, but your ability to lock in new strategies and build new skills in that, in that uh, regard are going to be uh, very limited. So if I had an ideal um, way of, of having someone work with a coach, it would be actually having those sessions during the busiest times of the year, because mm. then you're able to speak with your coach, identify challenges, identify potential solutions, actually put them to practice during these crazy periods, reflect with your coach again. And then by the time you're done with that huge project, you use that as huge learning opportunity, you actually learn and you apply these new skills uh, in the act. Um, so yeah. that's what I try to explain to people when they tell me that, no, no, they're too busy. Uh, obviously, there are other cases where it is a legit excuse if someone's on maternity or paternity leave, <laughs> um, as much as that will be a stressful period, maybe there's not uh, the right types of opportunities <laughs> to apply specifically. So uh, the, the other the other major barrier or, or self-limiting kind of barrier people put in place is that they are very picky about uh, a particular type of coach that they they look at coaching more as uh, uh, expert consulting or mentorship. And so when they are given an option of uh, different coaches, they're very picky and they want a specific type of uh, coach with a specific type of experience set that mm -hmm. mirrors theirs. Um, mm. And there are some benefits of having coaches that have some shared experience. Uh, maybe they have been in a similar sector. Maybe they have um, same type of workplace experience, country, city, um, sector. But uh, ultimately, coaching is designed in a way that it doesn't require that um, uh, type of practical guidance during sessions. So um, trying to explain to people that, look, you can have a a highly specific business mentor or sector uh, expert uh, help you in those regards. Uh, but when it comes to leadership coaching or executive coaching or even life coaching, that um, this person, you just need to have good chemistry with them. Yeah. And they need to be able to understand uh, that. So we, we have a guide to help people pick a coach and we explain to them um, mm. what are the different elements that you should uh, look out for uh, when picking out a coach that they don't need to be the same person as a business mentor. And often it's, it's good to have both. So I think um, that's also been um, a learning for us recently that um, people need to explain that uh, um, they, they don't need to be so, so picky. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you called out so many great points. The last one that you talked about people, uh, what they think about or their criteria for picking a coach. This is something that came up in the other conversations in this series as well. And uh, that what came up was, yeah, really uh, focus on how you feel after you have the conversation with that coach. Do you, do you see a, a match with your value systems and exactly to your point, the chemistry piece of it. And, uh, and it's also important to understand the difference between mentors and coaches and make sure that we're not uh, looking, we are thinking that we want a coach and then we're looking for a mentor. So having that clarity is also extremely important. And the other barriers you called out around uh, affordability, uh, also having the right set of people to uh, select from. Uh, so I, I, uh, I, I've had the benefit of using coffee chat myself and also so to me this is exciting of the opportunity for us to use technology to help solve some of these challenges 
So having said that, I know you've alluded to some of the uh, changes that have come about, but what other changes have you seen? How has the industry evolved in the last four or five years? Technology obviously is one, but what else are you seeing? Uh, yeah, I mean, th there's definitely, um, I mean, speaking more broadly, I think the, the use of the word coach has um, dramatically increased. I think people like this idea of a coach, uh, but it, it can mean a lot of different things. Uh, and I know that's uh, been kind of uh, almost a sticking point for um, ICF and uh, professional coaches. So we, we try to um, identify coaches who are, are certified and credentialed as professional coaches. Um, but yeah, I've seen lots of, um, lots of different types of, of coaching that get promoted. And so uh, Coffee Chat has had to essentially um, decide and figure out which types of coaching we want to uh, promote uh, mm -hmm. within uh, companies. And so, some, coach, some companies are quite particular on uh, only wanting uh, their staff to access um, kind of leadership and uh, career coaches within their company. Others, because uh, because they, they might align that with their their training objectives. Um, others um, want it to be more of a leadership benefit uh, or staff benefit, and so I actually view it as okay. They should be able to pick any type of coach, whether that's a life coach or career coach, and it's more meant to be a holistic, almost um, mental health uh, benefit uh, mm. for staff. So I think there's been a lot more uh, openness uh, to that. Mm. Um, and most of my experience is, is from markets like Kenya and South Africa, and to some extent Mauritius, where I'm based. Uh, so there's definitely been an openness to that. I think that um, is, is in part due to uh, obviously all of the uh, turmoil over the past few years of the shift to remote work and then back to hybrid work, um, but also just increased awareness of um, mental health and needing to uh, build sustainable um, careers. Um, and there's been a lot of pressure on companies to compete for talent. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's definitely been interesting and, and uh, great to see companies investing in, in coaching. And, and it also presents um, an opportunity to be uh, uh, more personalized in, in training. So I think that mm -hmm. the, the era of like group training uh, and just general um, basic training, I think, is is uh, being uh, replaced in a lot of ways of highly personalized, um, so uh, personalized solutions. Whether that is one-on-one -on -one coaching or whether that's giving staff access to things like LinkedIn Learning, where they can pick their own types of mm. um, content to to learn. So mm. yeah, really exciting to see the future of work uh, pan out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love how you called out uh, coaching as uh, potentially being part of mental health benefits offered by companies. And that's that's such a, it's a positive reframing in, in my opinion. Uh, and this was also one of the things that uh, came up earlier on uh, with other guests is um, coaching used to be considered as a remedial measure, but now it's looked at as a uh, as an aid to become better. It's not about fixing anything. And so I hear the same from you in terms of the greater acceptance of, of the concept of working with a coach and people really seeking out coaches. And yes, absolutely, whatever has happened and continues to happen in the, in the last two, three years uh, has played a big role. Um, so how do you what you know the theme for this international coaching week is reimagine the future so uh, how do you reimagine the future of coaching yeah well uh i mean <laughs> when i launched coffee chat my, my goal was and it still is to make it so that anybody any company uh, that has managers can make this type of service available mm -hmm. um and i think the ability to uh, equip managers with the tools of uh, peer coaching has been kind of uh, helped me renew that mission because it was really an uphill battle in the first couple of years to get companies to invest in 
one-on-one -on -one professional coaching for their leaders, uh, especially at the middle management level. Um, but having peer coaching as, as another option um, has really um, got me thinking that this mission is uh, indeed uh, feasible. Um, and uh, I think it will uh, also help um, a lot more managers realize what coaching is and get them excited about potentially uh, pursuing coaching as as kind of a um, uh, part of their uh, future career as well. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people who go through coaching from the participant uh, side uh, end up um, wrapping up their coaching and thinking, okay, this is something I want to do uh, in the future and mm -hmm. starting off by just practicing uh, these types of peer coaching principles with other managers is a good way to to get um, to experiment a little bit with that because it's one thing receiving coaching and thinking that was great. I want to be a coach, but being on the other side of it and really um, looking at it from almost a client perspective, it changes things and people want to experience that um, because it, it's definitely different from from mentorship. Um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of ways for for coaching to be reimagined. Um, mm. And I hope that uh, in the next couple of years, we'll give Coffee Chat uh, more, more learnings on how to make peer coaching um, more accessible and more uh, widespread uh, in, in, in the African region. Mm. That's, that's such a bold and inspiring vision. Uh, that's fantastic. And uh, I'm so looking forward to seeing how that pans out. Uh, so as we wrap up this conversation, Chris, what is your message to aspiring coaches? Yeah, if, if you are looking to actually be, become a, a professional coach, um, I would really um, approach it from a long-term perspective. Uh, I think if, if someone is looking to uh, enter the coaching industry, even as a full-time or a part-time um, coach, uh, I've met lots of coaches who, you know, it takes, it takes a while to build up your, um, client base and to really build uh, a network and kind of get your, your personal brand out there and learn what your niche is. So, uh, if you're going to, um, explore that, to be willing to, you know, look at it almost as a startup to say, this might take five years to really get, um, Get this personal uh, coaching practice uh, up and running, mm -hmm. uh, even with platforms like Coffee Chat and, and a lot of uh, other similar platforms. It, there's no guarantee of getting clients, um, and uh, yeah, uh, still it, it's it's worth it. And uh, just look at it from a, a long term um, kind of investing in your career, investing in becoming a coach, and looking at the benefits that you receive from it aside from potentially earning. Um, uh, an income from it. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of treating it as a startup. Uh, it, it really is, right? Isn't it? And it's, uh, there's there's a fair bit of risk and there's a fair bit of reward. And and not reward may not be in the traditional sense, but it's it's very gratifying to be uh, to be a coach and to be able to support others in their uh, success. And I think uh, that that definitely is something that uh, the reason I'm engaged in this profession, so uh, I can relate to that. Um, any any parting thoughts as we wrap up? No, uh, uh, it was a great conversation. Thanks for the opportunity to to chat about this uh, during uh, International Coaching Week, and thanks for all the work that you do in terms of uh, raising awareness about coaching uh, across your network. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to continuing with this uh, conversation series uh, for this week and more to come. Stay tuned. Thanks, everyone.